I try to, and I will, unfortunately I will not do enough during these lectures, and I was adapting myself to that, is to show, to exhibit a variety of biological basic and less, less so basic phenomena, but see them and emphasize mathematical structure behind them. So we don't try to make mathematical theory or any kind of formalization of biology, which is, doesn't seem to be very productive, but just look at the pictures and just think about them as, as mathematicians do and just to see that things are consistent and maybe find some missing, logically missing point, but still keeping very closely to, to, to actual phenomena. Like on this picture, this is very beautiful. Think when you see this Fibonacci pattern on a, of, in a flower, it's probably a sunflower. And uh, in here, it's so what's interesting that explanations are not biological but physical. So, because uh, there are quite a few aspects in biology which are mo not so much biological, but maybe physics, chemistry, and mathematics, but still they come from biology. And we are not very much concerned with that. Certainly, we, we love it to discuss it, but it's not, our not, not a major, major objective, yeah? Though this is a really mathematics and biology. Yeah? But there are less obvious mathematics, and where we don't have already ready up mathematical concepts, like Fibonacci numbers. And, uh, and this, which we, want to, which we want to emphasize and understand, Okay, we move it here, right, so this way. And so I just I repeat what I said before, that what is the objective, and again, looking at the Buffon, what he said, and I don't think it was said before him, and it was repeated many times in a different form, including actually Pringle uh, Schrodinger, who never read, I guess, Buffon. Usually it's not read outside of France. And uh, so, and this is a, if you look at this, you can easily say that it was said, you know, by, by Darwin or even by some, you know, Creek or whoever. It sounds very modern. And the idea stands. Yeah, we have incomprehensible structure and we, it, it's, it, it requires some effort to realize you don't understand it and then you start understanding it, yeah. And this is a, and there are many other, I was saying this many times, Buffon is completely kind of, in the, uh, forgotten in the English-speaking world. Even when they refer to, to Buffon, they refer not to Buffon, but somebody who refers to Buffon who read it. Yeah. I don't know how much of this was translated, actually. I mean, not that I read myself, my much with that. But this is a very beautiful French, anyway. And this is an objective, so I want to now summarize. So we don't want, and just, we are quite skeptical, and it's, it's a reason for that, try to define life. And as we shall see, all these definitions, especially when they come out of biology, are extremely naive, yeah. And they kind of, but as a funny, I would even say, but we can describe what we see in life, more or less basic. Some, some, I, I describe some, but not all patterns, kind of features of life, and then try to see so what is, why we think it might be mathematics in there. And so, so let's go to our first point. Life as we know it, okay. So even if we look at the very simple term words in life, and you know that there are concepts like organism, life, and death. And so what they are, as mathematicians are concerned, right? So one phenomenon in life and also in kind of life-related structures is division into more or less well-defined objects. And one of them are organisms. And this also goes, not, it's certainly not only in life, right? The matter in the universe also kind of go in clusters like stars and planets and galaxies, yeah? But it also happened in life, but for different, by different mechanisms for different reasons, apparently. And so there are organisms and them, as a mathematician, you can say they're connected and they're stably connected in certain forms. And actually, as it was pointed out by René Tom, we don't understand why so. So what is a simple, logical, mathematical way to understand it? And this is not the only connectedness in life. As you see, there are different levels of connectedness. 
And of course, the word connected is not used by biologists, but, but for mathematicians. And when you say it, you start searching for them, right? And so this is the one connecting. Secondly, there is life and death. Mm. And this is not so easy to define, yeah. And just to understand. Of course, you just have all these kinds of words. Somebody is moving, somebody is not, etc. And uh, but it's interesting again to understand mathematically. So we have dynamical processes as a system, and it may stop, it may resume its moving, or it may stop and not resume its moving, right? At least there are these possibilities. And again, you have ponder if you can understand in some general conceptual mathematical or nearly mathematical terms, right? Of course, you have to keep in mind the right an interesting example like East Baker East, it's dry. You can buy it in the supermarket, but you throw it in a in a, in, in a sugarly environment, though pure sugar probably not enough, because you need also proteins, or, or at least something from which you can make proteins, you need nitrogen, and it become alive, right? And it's because of, in the, and it's hard to believe how complicated every, every kind of piece of this is, is yeah? It's, it's cell structure. And its life and its development is an amazingly rich in structure. But it's like that. And there are some other things of that kind. Besides like seeds or whatever. So there are organisms, but there is something else. So whatever you see there, you can say I had the basic organism, but then you see they develop from it. Sometimes develop from embryos or develop from seed or from spores or whatever. And so it's very difficult and to, you, easy to miss something. And they, so you have to have this picture of, of, of real things. And then the basic pattern in life discovered, well, it's hard to say when it's already discovered, because the first who observed it was Hooke, who was contemporary of Newton. And they were saying, well, one of the victims of bad character of Newton. And he discovered cells, in, 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 actually in, in plants. And then it has kind of this long story of development, a realization of importance of cell, which was achieved only in, in, in the middle of the 19th century, when it was realized everything is made of cells. And uh, here is the pictures, you have to look at them and just to try to appreciate, appreciating them is essential. So cells are everywhere and this have this kind of structure. But again, there are cells which don't have this structure, right? And the most common of them is in your blood, erythrocytes are cells, but not like that, yeah. They have something common with these cells, but not quite. They don't have DNA. They don't have inside chromosome, yeah? They're just little vessels with, with hemoglobin. But this is exceptional, yeah. So again, for anything you say, you must be very careful. It's Whatever you say is forever always means only 80 percent, 80 percent true. Here, however, yeah, I, I wonder. On my computer, I can make things as big as I want, but here it's not so easy to enlarge these pictures mm -hmm. because you cannot see them. Is there some way to make, for example, this one enlarge? This now you can see better. Okay, these are much better pictures, and they are. Bacterium, yeast cell, and this is uh, your body cell. And you see, they are quite different. And this is really fundamental type of differences we have, especially between bacterial cell and all other cells. There are two types of bacteria. It was one of them, was this division of the type was discovered relatively recently, maybe 30, 40 years ago. That there are what we call usual bacteria, and then there are archae ar 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 bacteria. These archae bacteria close to ourselves and to bacteria, but they genome because the, this this big cell, or either it's yeast or our cell, have this inside this nucleus, and they have, have some other structures. Specifically, they have mitochondria, some s s substructures, some little little kind of organism inside unlike bacterial cells, and they're fundamentally different in, in, in their nature. And the gap between them, between bacteria and, say, amoeba, is infinitely better, infinitely grander than between amoeba and ourselves, yeah, biologically. So we, just from a certain point of view, highly, uh, almost indistinguishable from amoebas. Yeah. We're, we're, 
on the cellular level work very, very, very much the same. The bacteria are different, and the structure of the cell much simpler. Again, in the recent years, there was some kind of realization there are micro stru structures in bacteria, but I'm not certain that I properly understand it. Maybe you know more about that. That uh, there is what was called compart compartmentalization, division into parts. Something it is not just a vessel with molecules. It's something more. Of course, it's clear on these pictures. And I always said, oh, it's, it's not like a liquid. They are full of little compartments, bottles, and where things happen. And they're much more uh, elaborate, and as these pictures show, yeah. The major thing which fill our cells called, I cannot pronounce it correctly, ER, kind of networks of membranes filling the cell. And, uh, and the size, of course, very different. There is order of magnitude linear, order of magnitude is about 10, which means volume wise it's 1,000. So our cell 1,000 times on the average greater than bacterial cells. And, uh, and we came from the archaeobacteria and then assimilated, swallowed the usual bacteria. That apparently this is what the canonical story says, and these are cells. And, um, and so it took a long time, yeah, it, about one and a half billion years before these things happened. And this was a kind of a unique event. We had, there's no clear idea how often it happened. It happened successfully. It worked, didn't work. There was selection. Nobody can say that. But it was any, in any way subject to selection. It was certainly one exceptional event. And apparently it happened by the time when there was enough oxygen atmosphere. Again, up to some point, the development of life on Earth was very much dictated by the production of atmosphere by cyanobacteria. They were producing some amount of oxygen. Oxygen was poisoned, they were dying, then there were periods with low oxygen, and again, there were, then there were more bacteria, they again producing oxygen, dying again. They were kind of, I think it was more or less established, this process for quite a while. And then at some moment, this happened. There was this merging, and this combination plus excess of oxygen allowed new way of life. Originally, this oxygen was a poison. And now it is the essence of life because met 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 metabolism, uh, production uh, of energy and use, use your energy much more efficient in the presence of o oxygen on Earth. And so, so it happened. And there are many other factors, of course, in, in, in how life, uh, life developed. There are very many accidental things which is, and so it's a still big problem if there are other places in the universe that harbor life. And there are reason to believe none besides the Earth, at least developed life, because it shows it took more time, or more or the same time, to go from bacteria to that than go from the simple, simple cells to the big organism. So each next stage so it was happening faster. So it is again, Things are divided by cells, and so this division on this basic unit is essential feature of life. And again, mathematically, you want to think if it is accidental, it just was going this way, or you can imagine life structured in the most amorphous way that could develop some continuum of something growing, not divide into individual units. The way we see life, that's absolutely impossible. But again, as a mathematician, we can imagine possibilities when it will be possible and try to see a log logical scheme for that. Right? So everything we see there, and on one hand, we accept there is some good reason for that, which we don't logically understand, or somebody. Of course, there would be, there are plenty of explanations, but by any such explanation, biology, there is a counter explanation. And because life is not well-defined entity, just general feeling of what we have about life. Yeah. So, and at some moment, I hope in this lecture I come to that, but I'm not certain. Now, okay, let's return to the less enlarged things. So what about, uh, what about this uh, sort of uh, bacterial congregations kind of form? But the, the, the bacteria with, with certain, uh, big, making big cells. Yeah, they, they, they form sort of multicellular organisms. Well, just, uh, no, no, well, of course they do, but they're not exactly multicellular organisms. They're just they're not organisms. They can come in and together, right? 
They're not coordinated. They have no specialization of cells yet. I have a phenotype which defines their function. Yeah, there are some. Of course, of course, anything we say about biology is something. A biologist find a counter example. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. So, this is exactly very interesting shape of the biological knowledge. It's not like that. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. And it's makes make it so interesting. Absolutely, I agree. There is more in the subject. Of course, I don't know, but there are indeed this. I'm not. Uh, okay. But but even slime, I think it is is eukaryotic. Yeah, bacterial still conglomeration are rather simple. Um, well, if you get these sort of shapes, they form um, uh, when a shallow water. Yeah, they make this form, but again, the, my, you see in a second, you come to, sometimes the form is shape not for biological reason, but for physical reason. There is some little interaction, then they make a shape because physics for, or forces them. Then it's not programmed. Well, it's their way of doing what they do. Yes, of course, I agree, but there's different mechanism for multicellularity. I agree, it's, it's agree, but it's certainly different, yeah. I mean. I mean, fundamentally different. I guess it's more complicated than what I said. But again, even when bacteria are not kind of make connected body, they still make community in, in, in interact in a certain way, right? Yes. And whether they're connected or not is a minor issue. We'll come to connectedness, to this connectedness in, 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 in a minute. So again, how much, what is the connect, connectivity with the structure in life is an issue in itself. So let's make it again smaller. So another feature of life, as we know it, I'm sorry I repeat this kind of little thing, but it's, it's amusing to see still how many of them. It's uh, macromolecularity, and there are several kind, of, several kind of macromolecules, and they're somewhat different, yeah? So I would start the simplest one are lipids. And uh, they're never especially big. All lipids which we have in cells are below 1,000 Daltons. Dalton is just the uh, uh, atomic weight of hydrogen, right? And all other macromolecules are much bigger. They go in billions of time of Daltons. But what's interesting about them, this and some, again, biologists would exist, life wouldn't be possible without lipids and probably started with lipids because lipids tends to self-assemble. You have this, some particular molecules in the solution, and this mathematical and physically fantastic phenomenon. And I don't think there is a kind of theoretical study, or that significant theoretical study. There is much of experimental study, especially in, in biological framework. So you have this molecule, and they make this kind of shape. And, and that what brings them together is not mutual attraction. Right? Not that they stick together because they have some forces, but they're forced together by ambience of the water because they don't, roughly, they don't like water. And in this shape, if you can see the system consisting of these molecules in water, this shape at certain temperature mi minimize the free energy. So free energy is kind of energy with correction on probability of this happening. Yeah. So yeah, probability of this happening has weight. And it's energetic weight and the lower energy, the more likely they be contacted because they, the attraction to water is small than attraction to, the, to themselves, so to speak. Yeah. But they don't attract it to themselves among themselves at all, right? It's zero attraction. But it's how they interact with water. So mathematically, it's extremely kind of amusing thing. For example, if you look at the minimal surface in, in, uh, of a sour bubble, it's also made in this way. So it's not a continuous surface, but collection of this kind of molecule attached to each other, they can move within each other. If you warm them, or you add some, change the buffer, add something, I don't know whether acid or base to that, but they disappear. But if you again cool them back, they come back again. And there is no mathematical theory of that. So geometrically, it's like minimal surface, but it's a more interesting structure. And internally, some of them, of course, in cells, they're not exactly like that. There is much more. There are proteins inside, which shape, which much deform and rigidify the structure. Our erythrocytes are almost like that. They have almost no, no protein in their membrane. It's like this makes the membrane. They're very thin. They are order of one, maybe one nanometer or something. Yeah, and and this is what makes cells, which make. I didn't make 
create identity of cells, right? So cells have identity. You know, this concept of myself appears there. And so all living organism, but not all of them, kind of, they have an idea of themselves, not exactly as we know. Sometimes insects eat themselves, yeah, and we don't. And this is, again, by the way, mathematically non-trivial concept. It has many aspects to that, what meaning oneself, right? It will, it will go forever discussing it, especially when it comes to human, human personality. But even for cells, it's, it's rather remarkable that there are definite shapes and there are rather stable shapes, and they appear here. But again, when, we, when it comes to the size, that critical, in my view, one obvious re relation, either the community, even small community of bacteria, larger in their numbers than the number of macromolecules, even of atoms in a bacterium. And this makes them exi their existence plausible. If otherwise, there would be, we, we can, well, would be practically, well, life would be unbelievable. So this is kind of a simple computation show that it would be highly improbable at all, existence of life. And or at least uh, create uh, origin of life. Life may be abstractly could have been possible, but not, there would be no chance of this to come to, to be realized by any kind of process, which is usually disregarded. When people just speak about this origin of life, their kind of numbers are kind of neglected, yeah. This kind of simple number. And but these numbers mathematically are crucial. The number is everything actually in, in, in biology comes in numbers of identical copies of something for two different mechanisms. There are two different mechanisms. And without that, nothing would work, at least the way we know how it works. And so one of them that there are inside of a cell, there are macromolecules, and they appear in many identical copies. Everybody, except the chromosomal DNA, which may be in one or in our organism, keep forgetting, it's 23 or how many copies in, of, of connected units. So all other appear in many, in many identical copies. And again, this is an essential feature if you want to imitate, and this could become at some point, if you want to make artificial representation of life, you may or may not, of course, take this into account. So, but so, you know, the first abstract uh, attempt to realize life was, to which I become in a minute, in a half an hour, is it was von Neumann's idea of mathematical description of self-reproduction, his universal constructor, but it does not satisfy, doesn't have most of these properties of life. And then mathematical question, we can formulate it, I think some of them, in a rather precise way, we look at this and this and these features of life and say, aha, can you incorporate them, can you limit your constructor with these properties, whether it make it more complicated to construct or on the, on the contrary, suggest you how to do it in a, in a, in a, in a kind of more, more elegant and simple way. All right. So, but this is a roughly the size of di different different molecules, and again the sizes sizes are kind of essential. You have to compare this, and there are other numerical parameters where the the most essential are energies and times of events, right? So that this molecules interact among themselves, and there are two types of interactions, at least roughly two types. There are co covalent bonds where energy of order of several hundreds kilojoules per mole, so, so something, hundreds, and there are small, weak interactions, which is 20, 30 times weaker, and they're comparable to the energy of Brownian motion, which again, let's say Brownian, and it's totally, Brown is the wrong name attached to this. But it's called Brownian because it's Sounds good. And, uh, and this is a, again, the, in all this molecular function, it's impossible if it were a continuous spectrum, was continuous spectrum of energies. You use this rather discrete, of course, they're a little bit vague. And this, by the way, again, happens in certain situations in mathematics. When it's very difficult to organize structures unless you separate scale sometime artificially. So, so actually, I'm not quite certain that this is absolutely crucial or it just more or less ch life chosen this separation. 
But again, it well, well agrees, of course, with the, the covalent bonds so with the level of energy you receive from green photon from light, from light. From, uh, and, and then there is this, and, and then there are weaker energy, weaker interaction, which certainly would be easily destroyed by this. So, and much more sensitive to temperature. And uh, because the major the kind of biological connection between big molecules are weak interaction and they're barely stable. You know, you, you leave your temperature of your body from 37 to 43 and you are dead. Right? So all this weak, your proteins is decay. And probably, I don't know exactly at which moment it was specifically makes you dead, but you know that your protein become rather unstable. So the, the reaction of your body try, trying to stabilize this, producing so-called shock proteins, which want to kind of stabilize the proteins. I, I, well, this is interpretation of what you observe. Again, I'm not certain what I'm saying is correct. Right. And uh, so, and these are, again, mathematical question. And uh, if or organizing the interesting structures, you need to separate energy. And, and what this energy means mathematically, energy is a physical concept, of course, but it's something has mathematical interpretation. It's one parameter. And the second parameter is time scale. And the fact that chemical reaction, which between chemicals inside of your cell, happens incredibly fast much faster than would ha happen by themselves because they're catalyzed by enzyme. So catalysis looks well, kind of trivial thing. We just make things faster. And you say, ah, there would be no catalysis, they will go slower. But it's not so, right? Because there is a difference with different speeds. And so if you have this mixture of, of molecules, and depending which catalyzer you add, so some reaction will go in different order. And depending on the order, this is not commutative. Yeah, you get completely different structures. And so, this distribution of speeds is encodes organization of these molecules. So it's a hidden code which create out of this mixture of very homogeneous high entropy mixture something more, more specific. And this, of course, rec definitely requires energy. And the energy, well, there is an energy in the cell which is responsible for that most. How is this enc encoded? You have different, different enzymes, you have different speed of performance. If you change the speeds, yeah, and throw them, you have different reaction, you go in different order. And so you have different result. Because the result of a chemical reaction is a many mixture of different things. Even if you start with simple thing, you have completely different thing, right? That's obvious, right? But logically, exactly what it happens or not, who knows? But this I'm saying, this is a crucial to remember different speeds. For example, some enzymes are very slow, like Rubisco, one of the most common protein on Earth, and most people, of course, not, but never heard of that, which is responsible for photosynthesis. And it's certainly, I think, about, takes nine, 10 reactions per second. And some, just one, one tenth of a, one tenth, and some enzymes work on the scale of millions, millions of times faster. So, and I think there is a meaning, some reason for that. Of course, evolutionary, when you have this pre-life, winning with those who will develop faster and those who divide faster. And so you need fast processes for some of them. But for some of them, the, say, Rubisco is slow, I think partly because if you, if you do it too fast, you produce too much oxygen, and oxygen is, too po is poisonous. So, and if you want to make our air cleaner, we have to have to make enzyme faster than Rubisco, make oxygen resistant structures, uh, biological structures, yeah, which is not impossible. Yeah, that's maybe a, a good way to, to solve the problem, just develop a new kind of vegetation, new trees, and would be kind of nice, it's fun to do that, right? To have a new kind of vegetation. But that is a fact. Again, I, I only can say it, I certainly don't know enough to, to, to elaborate on that, but that's, I think, very, very interesting to understand that. You understand what is the logic, what are the pattern of different enzymes of their speed, and of course, what are the mathematical description of these enzymes. You don't speak about physical mechanism, how they work, but just mathematically what, what, this, what catalysis means. So we shall see it, is a, it also shapes and creates life on, on, on many levels. So, and some people kind of may emphasize that life is just Everything this about enzymatic 
out of catalytic reactions, which we say. So it's again logical, mathematical, whatever puzzle, which which is maybe certainly being approached by very different kind of scientists and mathematicians also participate in that. So it's fun to think about that. But you have to learn infinitely more than I know of, of, of that. And now, what about next? What you want to say? I was more or less saying all that, but now I just want to I, I arrive at it more systematically. You see, it's now very convenient because. Um, you, you, you can th many things online. You just you put them, and you don't have to say them. Just click, and there are articles. I, I try to choose those which are sufficiently simple, and, and general, and informative. So, I'm, I'm going to first. Yeah, this is the best definition of life, which is here by Kunin saying just this. Meta scientific task anyway, which we are hard to argue. But on the other hand, it's fun to try to make to make a definition, but realizing it's just there's a game, it's, you cannot do it. It's just exercising rhetoric, so to speak. Now, why am I enjoying so fast? I just hmm? okay. So it's uh, reproduction. So 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 so, so what, what, uh, and. Uh, And there is uh, uh, reproduction appearance uh, appearance ad identical copies, but it has two uh, mechanism for that. So we have identical proteins in the in the cell, and they reproduce. For most of them, reproduce themselves by just being done independently, like coming from conveyor for, for, from the cell. Except, but again, there are remarkable, remarkable exceptional exceptional proteins. Which prions, which make copy of themselves, sort of by themselves, and have completely different way of creating informations, and, and it has some unpleasant consequences in all this cow disease. On the other hand, they play kind of positive function in many organisms. But we kind of we always are account the example to anything you say, but certainly these are not self-reproduction proteins. Don't carry in typically information. Or ways to produce themselves directly, but they certainly do it indirectly using DNA. But but basic reproduction uh, is based on template replication. There is one molecule, and it make a template, and then, not surprisingly, from that point of view, there is complementarity. It's hard to make template exactly A from B, but it's if there is complementarity, you know, like you always do it, things works much better, and this is what accepted by, by life, the major replication goes this way. So DNA molecule consists of two parts, but for some reason in this picture, I think, I don't see where it is. So reproduction. So cells are divided in a rather mechanically, relatively simple way, and, and part of the process is really kind of physical, Exactly because the bilipid membranes, when they grow, they may spontaneously some way become narrow and being separated. Yeah, and this is mathematics. It's very well kind of known bubbling phenomenon. It doesn't happen in such a pure way in, in cell. If you look carefully, again, people, I, I, I learned it's, there are proteins which actually make the shrinking there, and they never rely purely on physics. But physics makes it it's compatible with physics. And this happens all the time, not only for division of cells, but also the part of the membrane, especially, for example, how neurotransmitters go from one neuron to another. There are these little membrane surrounding them and then being moved in those processes. In this picture, it's not clear, clearly seen. And then the second process is it's just development for a multicellular organism. This, uh, how uh, the embryonic development, em embryogenesis, is another process which certainly we say, and I, I don't know what to say about that. It's again logically incomprehensible mechanism with complexity, how it's kind of, if you literally formulate everything we know about that, you just see it's impossible. It's actually true about everything in, in biology. If you 
look into the details, you see it's just logically impossible. And so that makes it so interesting, of course, for a mathematician to understand what makes it possible. And so there is this process of division. And uh, again, it's, there is a mechanism which, which does it. And uh, sometimes chemists may say that it is just outer catalysis. It's just outer catalysis. You have this surrounding of many molecules in the cell through the DNA. In the DNA, there is some process. And the result, we have two DNA. And so uh, this is outer catalysis. And some people feel very happy with that. But of course, it's just words. Because actually, uh, to this when we come to the outer catalytic reaction, by themselves, rather, uh, I'm using and mathematically we don't know what they are. And chemists have not so many examples of small molecules. There are some examples, but they're kind of atypical. And the, the fact that there are such big molecules without a catalysis is not kind of a chemical phenomenon. And chemists say, love to insist, it's just biology, it's just out of catalytic reaction, but these are just words, yeah. in my view, I mean. Maybe because I'm not chemist, it doesn't sound to me explanatory. But, but what, of course, chemical is uh, m m metabolic processes in, in the cell, and there are in, in the cell, at, at the moment, there are hundreds several hundred reactions. It cannot be too much, yeah, it's more or less as many reactions, roughly, as how many enzymes you have in, encoded in your DNA. So this is, we have about 20,000 and probably over them. Half of this involved in this reaction, so it's going hundreds. But still, they go extremely fast. All these reactions, they go in circles, and they go extremely fast in the, in the picture. Of that, I, I took another picture from internet. This time, yeah, it's such a mess. You don't have to understand what it is. It's extremely complicated network of reaction. They have how interact, and the the ma major reaction is energy transformation from the food you get to the internal chemical energy of the cell, in a particular molecule, which carry this energy, and which contains phosphorus, and. Uh, and uh, called Krebs cycle. And phosphorus, according to some people, is kind of very specific, very uh, kind of, we're lucky that we have enough phosphorus available on Earth. And there is a particular story of this phosphorus. And there is a point of view that most planets and galaxies we see wouldn't have this phosphorus. And because phosphorus is not so common element in the universe, and the form we have it, it's, Soluble, most of this, of course, non soluble, but there is some amount of soluble phosphorus needed for major processes in the cell. It, it, it involved in the structure of DNA, but there some other structure could work because there are these things which make this DNA polymer is involved for phosphorus, but also phosphorus used for, as a convenient a a energy conductor. And it, apparently, again, I, I, I certainly don't understand specificity of that, but it must be, it's, uh, amount of energy is slightly less, probably one half of typical covalent energy. It's pretty big and very efficient kind of energy, and it, it, the way it's transmitted, of course, you shall, shouldn't lose it to heat. And so, there is a f famous, so this is discussed in the literature at the, kind of, as a possible solution of the Fermi paradox, because no, the story is that Fermi came to the group with his colleagues and, and, and asked, where are they? And everybody understood what he meant. He meant, where are all these aliens? You have huge galaxy, billions, several hundred billions of stars. And as Fermi justifiably noticed that if there is civilization slightly more developed than ours, and colonization of the galaxy will be instantaneous, maybe 10, 20, 50 million years. It's a small time for a galaxy. Because you, yes, you make robots, they go to new planets, they make new robots, new. And even if you move very slowly with a, about you know, 10, 20 meters per second, how easily we can do it even now. And then in a few tens of maybe 100 million years, you can colonize the whole galaxy. It didn't happen. There is no aliens, apparently, in the universe. And there are various kind of pessimistic conjectures that maybe they were, but they all arrived at some level of civilization like ours, and now our last seconds of existence, and then we will disappear. Or 
at least civilization will collapse, which is quite a possibility, or life could, or couldn't develop or couldn't develop to the intelligent level. And indeed, it took th well, three and a half billion years to go from bacteria to, to prim primates. And it's a long time, and certainly there were many turns, and easily it could have been, and this comparable actually with the age of the universe. The universe was well, merely 12 or something billion years old. So imagine it goes slightly slower, it takes maybe 100 or billion years, several hundred billion years, and then it will practically will never happen. So it didn't happen. So we were just extremely fast, maybe. But, and, and one of the reasons is with phosphorus is not common. And the way planets are being formed, so, 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 so those articles, phosphorus doesn't become available, and so life cannot develop without phosphorus. Of course, you need, everybody agrees, you need carbon, but you need also phosphorus. And this may be the two kind of, phosphorus may be bottleneck. On, on, on Earth, you know, probably accidentally also iron is somewhat bottleneck for life. Yeah. Most of the ocean is kind of lack life because it is no, uh, no iron. But that's probably accidental. But phosphorus is plays quite remarkable. All those rather small amount of phosphorus in your body, but still it may be quite interesting. And this, of course, has no mathematical explanation, but maybe. Again, if you look what the scale of energy should be and how effectively, efficiently you have to work without producing various chemical reactions, without dissipating energy, so you have to really go from one to another on the right energy level from one state to another. And it's also, I, I'm just curious, this of course, I don't know how to make this evaluation, that we can make this with so little heat produced. So, so the reaction must be very efficient in this respect. And, uh, and for that, you need this carry of energy and, and all enzyme, many enzymes uh, attuned to that. And this is not accidental that this, that this chemical, this, uh, the, the, the one which in ph ph phosphorus, the same which is in, in DNA and RNA, which connect, connect molecules together. So it has, it has double function, ATP. Okay, so this is a, another point. And again, the, the question is mathematically is how, how accidental is this or there is deep logic behind it. And so the, but the way you want to mathematically understand life, you have to look at different aspects of that and just analyze them independently and see what are structures, mathematical structure corresponding to them, which of course biologists would never do. Yeah, they want to have life altogether. But we shall there are more sim simply examples when you can throw away some of the properties and see what remains happens with, with, with the remaining one. But for that, you have to have deeper logical understanding of individual things. But, uh, but the, the, the understand their logic, you have to understand their real kind of chemistry and biology, and so it requires much more knowledge than I can offer you. But now, another thing is that there is, so there is this metabolism of many things, and it's homeostatic, so it's very well balanced, and self-regulating, and there are these words, and again, it's not obvious what they mean if you want to really deeply look look into that, right? So, so the self-regulation. So one of the phenomena, of course, which we have here with this metabolism is that it is uh, it's fairly stable, right? We can eat very different food and we can function in different temperature. And one of the amazing things, many processes. Uh, some uh, balance such a way, it does not depend on temperature. And, um, and, and so we are fairly stable, but we are fairly stable with respect to genetic perturbation of the environment or, again, environment, by the way, another kind of buzzword, and it's very it's, uh, no, highly non-trivial because there are, uh, environment appears in very many different ways. Environment of macromolecules in the cell or environment of living animals or plants on Earth uh, makes very different meaning and they're fundamentally different and the, we use the same word uh, often metaphorically. But still there is an issue of stability and this mathematical problem, mathematical concept, as we know very well, what does it mean have the, the dynamic, it's stable, but, but it is stable very selectively for a certain kind of perturbation is highly stable and for some, for some is highly unstable. 
And that's, again, very non-physical phenomena, very typical of life, without which life will be impossible. So on one hand, I repeat, you slightly change this atmosphere, you'd be, we don't notice it. But if you add some poison, then very small, especially if it be organic poison, it tremendously changes your met metabolism or your behavior. Right? So very small amount of energy, just one word spoken in a very a tiny little word, and you do something you wouldn't do otherwise, and the world will be different, right? It will be a tremendous amplifying effect. And there is no mathematical model for that. And it's unclear if you can do that in traditional terms, yeah? It's because it involves concepts which are not, there is no words for them in physics or in mathematics. Of course, there is no words in physics, physics at all. There is no mathematical model for what? for the fact that there are systems which are unstable with respect to genetic perturbation, but there are special, in, in, in very low energy signals, which we react very strongly. Because they, we are, because they, they carry kind of information, but not information in Shannon's sense, but they carry information significant for you. Like you have, a, a, for example, a snake bites you, and it's a new, a new poison, and you die very fast, and there's a glacial amount. Or you receive some smell, or some insect receives the smell of the signaling and that, you know, start moving somewhere. A predator smells you and runs after you, big body moves, up the, a few molecules coming to its nostrils. Yeah? And this has no physical expression. You cannot say it in physical terms. I, I described that, but there is no physical model for that because it's information. The word information appears again as a, as a word. We don't know what it means, right? Okay. But that's mathematically very interesting to understand this. And again, it's, it's, a, it's possible to, to say something interesting about it. Mathematically, it's certainly an issue. What does it mean that there is a system, a very stable, but then it's encoded, it's made to be unstable with respect to particular perturbations, so, which could be called signals, right, in biology. And this happens, and... You know, well, the, my immune system uh, usually functions uh, in a very stable fashion, but when I get infected with something, actually it gets, I get ill, kind of thing. So we have, we have processes uh, functioning that actually are both stable and unstable at the same time. Yes. No, but still, no. For genetic perturbation, we are stable, right? Okay. That's a fact, right? So to make unstable, you have to know the key to you, right? And this is a, you have a, like you open the door. The door is stable. It can do many things, it's closed, you know, like that, and it doesn't work. But then you have a key and you open it. And this has no physical interpretation for that. How to make physical model naturally describing that. I think it's, physics doesn't provide you with that because, you see, when you, uh, at some moment I wanted, I don't know if I come today, we'll discuss how probability is used. And the probability in biology and physics is fundamentally different because mathematics is the same. But the, but the intuition, and your unspoken assumptions are different, right? Because in physics, the basic principle is typical equals to the average. And, and in biology, never so, right? It's never so. Of course, if the physical process is still present there, then it's true. But when you have truly biological process, it's not like that. And then there is digital storage of information. And then information comes in. in. So far, it was chemistry, a little bit of physics, like a membranes. It was. It was physics, and then information comes again. Information which has no has a word, but nobody knows what it is. Inf information in biology. I mean, there is no good mathematical description of that, and I've been unclear if there is. Yeah, it may or may not be so. <clears throat> but there is digital storage of information, and this is of course on, on, on DNA. And so as we see now, I hopefully I can show it. And again, I've jumped. Okay, well, this is DNA. And uh, so, what is a, you know, the Schrodinger, on his book, to which I say a few words later, yeah, we have after them, you know, not make introduction, said that information or genetic, he didn't, I don't think he used this word, it might be a chromosome must carry inheritable information as a being a periodic crystal. And of course, when the great man something, you can interpret it two ways and say, you don't, you don't say it's nonsense, but try to interpret it. And it's what he had in mind, it's hard to say. But what is present here, and this again, 
typical phenomenon in many systems related to biology, that there is a crystalline, purely periodic structure. If you look in DNA, and there is this backbone, which is sugar phosphate based bone, and just have some polymer, and it's really periodic one. And it's sitting like kind of one, two, three, and then something written in there. There are some side chains, some molecular bases, which in this case there are four of them, and they're written in there. And this is again as a molecule, it has perfect, beautiful symmetry because if you look at the picture, you see that there is some direction. Each side, yeah, the sugar's not not exact, it's not reversible. But the two of them are inverted and they attach this way, so you have maximum symmetry. Right, so, and it's, there is binary symmetry appears actually in, in biology several times. It's, and it's for making templates, it's an ideal structure. And again, it's combined here, covalent and weak connections, weak bonds, different monomers joined in, in this line covalently. However, this covalent relation is still, interestingly, they have the neutral energy-wise. So it's already, it's in principle, just yes, requires little energy to break it or connect it. Yeah, it's close to zero, I believe, the energy of these bonds. And, and, uh, and then there's a weak connection between two, two of them, but there are, because there are so many of them, they match each other and they tied up rather closely. On the other hand, if you heat it, there is a te melting temperature and the, the two, two of them separate. So they're not very, so locally, you can kind of separate them. Otherwise, it would be difficult to make reproduction. But yeah, and uh, by covalent bonds, much stronger and much more stable. And that's a crucial, again, for the functioning of the cell. And this separation must be rather significant. To, 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 and this was whatever. The instance is very, very well known. And then there is this geometric shape making this helicoid. And this helicoid, this, of course, due, is rather periodic due to periodicity of the backbone. And um, of course, the symmetry is in, in, inevitable for any kind of simple structure because the orbit of an isometry of the Euclidean space, typical isometry, has this orbit, helicoidal orbit. And then helicoidal structure, symmetry, everywhere in biology, but if it's physical, not bi biological reason. But of course, it's always used, used, by, used by biology. So, and again, so to, in, indeed it has Bosch, and this also, present this phenomenon, present of course in, in proteins, because polypeptide chains which make proteins is, again at the same time, there is a back, backbone, the kind of primary structure, and uh, it just like polymer, periodic polymer, and then there are side chain which there are letters, but now it may be 20 or 22. Now there are 22 amino acids which may be used there, but say 20 is a material, how many from a logical point of view. So, and this also happens in our speech. In, in, in when we speak, also there is a background for that. There's a time, right? When we uh, spoken language lies on that time, which is rather simple periodic structure. And written, of course, also on the paper. And, uh, and this, Okay, maybe I make interruption, but I return to that. Because this also happens in, in mathematics, because we express, like numbers, we have positional representation of numbers, and, and that is a, not as innocuous as you may think. Yeah, and it, as you know, it took a long time for humans to arrive. Greeks, say, or Romans don't, didn't have it. It's highly non-trivial identification of numbers, like ta, 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 and making them, making them attached to digit background, which is not mathematical, coming from another world, which makes, kind of, you know, undermines any idea of, of, of rigorous mathematics. And this is explained from different perspectives by Deutsch, I forgot if his name, yeah, who, who, who brought up this quantum computers. And he rather smartly making fun of mathematicians in this respect. Okay. So I want to make the deduction, I want to attach maybe one extra section to, to what I want to say. Right, so it's where we stopped. This is a structure of DNA, I forgot I was, what I was saying about it. And um, yeah, about stability, because signals come next. So there are two types of information. 
in a cell. One is the storage information, the storage in DNA, and then used for two purposes. One, to running a cell, it tells you how to met metabolism must function. So it can be thought of as a catalyzer of all reactions. But this is, of course, it's just rather, we can say it in, 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 with certain definition of, 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 of catalysis, but certainly not adequate. And of course, there is no adequate definition. It doesn't correspond to usual practice of chemistry. You don't have this kind of catalysis. It's more, more, more metaphorical. And secondly, for replication. This is, but, and so what comes next? Another kind of information which is encoded, which is signaling. Yeah? Information related and expressed by signals. And um, and so yeah, you just there are pictures, pictures on how uh, it doesn't quite. Uh, I'm, I'm not always my pictures are correctly positioned here. So one information is running the cell, and it's kind of the, was one of the major uh, this, uh, and, uh, uh, achievements of the 60s, when it was much of the work by, 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 by Crick and uh, other, uh, lots of kind of people, just, uh, much of them said his name of Crick, that information goes from DNA, and then it goes to building proteins, and these intermediate agent there is RNA, and again, several people were involved discovering it. And again, all, all these stages have some logic why it behaves this way. It's not directly. And then there is a last step, which is very kind of hard to formalize, which protein folding. So how, at this moment, digital information, linearly written, becomes physical, become physical, becomes structural. And so you go from kind of design to, to actual building, right? And essentially, the way it is done is the, the fact it's possible, again, existence of protein folding, it is mathematically non-trivial issue, right? The fact that folding exists exact, that there is sufficient amount of sequences which give you more or less unique and easily implemented specific shape, it's not at all obvious. So mathematically, very formally, so, so what happens? This is kind of, so protein folding is just really very much mathematics involved. Because it's really kind of very much kind of mathematical question, though it's not so easy to formulate what's going into it, right? So you have a sequence of molecules attached one to another. There is a back, backbone all the same, it's, but there are different side chains, and so this different pieces of this string of this chain interact with each other differently. So you can imagine they also have the same kind of hydrophobicity or hydrophilic, similarly how you have, but now specific for each part, and that probably they may, at least this is belief, yeah, I, I certainly have no my opinion, factor if protein folding, but also, it's, 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 but essentially it's kind of polarization of different parts. They polarize differently, so stick to each other, so there is some energy of bringing different parts together. But part of them is just by the surrounding water. And there are these extra bonds. And, and, and this is encoded in the sequence. So some parts, with this letters written somewhere, there's some letters which are far away, they have tendency to stick together. And then this thing in, in a in suitable solution of water, maybe with something else, they become folded. And, and take specific shape programmed by this sequence. And the fact that it's, you can do it, it is uh, not at all obvious. And it's, you know, there is no mathematical, rational explanation for that. There are, and then it f and why it f can fold very fast. Again, because it's kind of complicated. If you think mathematically what happens, it's a kind of energy -like landscape, which has very complicated shape. It's not like that, because it's a rather singular landscape, because interaction local. Two parts interact only when they're very close. So if you look at the energy of that, it's everywhere kind of flat, and so there are only some channels where interaction takes place, and you run probably around these channels. 
this process very specific to the fact that we have one and three. It's kind of a, it's a free flowing molecules. It's in, in there, the shape it takes, well, it is a, there is a flurry theory and developed by mathematicians about well, this non self avoiding random block, which certainly mathematicians haven't done much, though we studied this a lot. And so, but that is self avoidance kind of implemented by the fact when you move, as you understand perfectly, because one and three, one of this genetically doesn't, has no self intersection, but self intersection may arise because you know that. How is the dimension of random passes? Random passes uh, two, right? If I'm not mistaken, in dimension three, no, 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 no one and a half, yeah, or something. But again, this is probability theory. I'm not certain, but what I, you certainly can see that when you move line, it tends to easily intersect itself, right? So when it has this Brownian motion moving this molecule, and the, this interaction is implemented pretty fast. But the, sp the speed of that depends, of course, on the uh, rate of diffusion. And I, I don't know exactly all these numbers, but certainly if it were 1 and 4, it wouldn't work. Right? So there is highly non-trivial kind of mathematics, and I don't think it was ever mathemat mathematically studied to the, the level it was studied, say, with long by physicists, yeah, who have their kind of view on protein folding and how it falls. And, 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 and so, determination of the folding by sequence is a famous problem in which not very well kind of good for human brain but was now very well solved by by artificial neural networks it's exactly a problem for perfectly fitting the modern networks because it just you, you you do it by analyzing and how people of course must do it by analyzing particular patterns not very much relying on this mathematics, which you say. We can forget this mathematics, but only look at what is known, at known example of proteins, where the structure were already determined and, and then reconstructed. So, so each stage there is rather, rather, rather remarkable. And amazing how, how it works. All these three points, all the three steps are not covered by any kind of science, by physics, by chemistry, and by mathematics. This biology, uh, they're kind of very elementary processes, and they only present in life uh, and, 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 and biology and life systems. And they kind of physical or chemical, or whatever, but traditional science tells very little about them. So we have to rely on experiments and think about that. So each of them kind of, each of those steps to understand it. Significantly, it's, it's, they take lots and lots of information about. And, and another thing is information. Of course, now, now we know this information can go both ways, and, and rather remarkable discovery of retroviruses when information may go backwards, but not from protein, but from RNA to DNA. But that is a kind of not fundamentally different from that. But then there is a quite different flows of information. It is a so in, in signaling, when you exchange information, and this is kind of materially, you, you exchange small, some by something physical, and this physical, of, of course, physicality of this is not so essential, but essential that information is carried by that. And information, again, the word information means that the re recipients of this, of, the, of this material thing distinguishes subtly on, on the shape of the things. Yeah? And this, of course, the boundary between information flow or material flow, say when, when we speak about proteins, it is, a, it is a kind of terminological, right? If you have your immune system and there are some antibodies which match antigen, and you can say it is physically, it is physically got one stick to another, all this information in one, and this information being communicated. Yeah, so it's very like if you open a door with a key, if it's physical process or information type process, you tell the door I have a key and so it opens. The sesame open and, it, and this is how it works. Right? So it's unclear what is what. But this is a kind of typical example of how information goes and sells. It's, it's a, a relatively simple, almost you can say mechanical or chemical. And then if you look, look already at animals, they, their action depends 
on the pheromone they receive and their action have nothing to do with this pheromone, right? There is no direct relation. It's, it's kind of symbolic, symbolic interaction. Some say the human are the only one who are able to convey information by symbolic interactions in the language. But from point of view of ant, this pheromone are also symbols, right? They don't in any way similar to the action following of receiving these kind of pheromones. Uh, so these two conversations were very much similar, well, on certain level, right? So, <coughs> just a question. How, <coughs> when you got to this stage, to what extent actually do you make a distinction between the receiver and the sender of these? Um, if, if, you're, if you're a single organism, then yeah. of course you can uh, try to organize things as best as you can. But once you're dealing with <coughs> different individuals yes. like these ants, yes. they are not necessarily uh, agreeing on the kind of uh, what the signal is supposed to mean and what... Uh, well, but not what, but still, we're receiving the signal, some action becomes, right? It stimulates an action which is not... Kind of <laughs> but not necessarily the, the, the action that the uh, sender... Is. But the sender intends nothing. What ant intends, yeah? It's unclear. He has, again, some... This is intention apl applicable to ants when he's skeptical, right? Up to some point. Or the same applies to people, of course, yeah? yeah this, sure. this happens all the time. You know, more always, always happens, right? <laughs> People always say something they didn't mean to say, because we do, right? It's, uh, but that's something which happens when you're dealing with two individuals, not with when you're trying to, uh, to uh, understand how a single... No, but, but, but look, so when you say something, at least it's now very well, I think, reasonably established. You never mean what you say, right? Uh, you're, I, I meant something you invent after you say it, right? This is basically, I think, more or less accepted principle now. You know, to decide to say subject or, de or decide to do subject and you do it, uh, first you do it and then you explain yourself why you do it, right? That's a general principle, right? This ca ca always confuses people and it creates sort of tension, right? <laughs> Everybody find exp the best possible explanation of what it does itself. The same probably true about ants, right? Yeah. But of course, still, still there are signals to how conveyed and they are not, they are symbolic, they are not physical. Right, not that the physical. Of course, there is physical process. It receives uh, some pheromone, and something goes inside, and some motion starts. But it, it is, it's physical process. But, but it's not direct. It depends on a prehistory, and this, for that reason, it's not explicable. Actually, in physics, also physics is not here, so I may say whatever I want. That um, there is a second law of thermodynamics, which is apparently historical law. It has no explanation because it depends on the history of how entropy was at the beginning of the universe. This is Boltzmann. Boltzmann point of view, you know, you found, I think, found a better one. And therefore, physicists is so touchy about it, yeah. They always say, oh, it's a great law, it's impossible to... It's, it's not a physical law, right? It just, it's just kind of like initial data. It's not, it's not a internally inside of the nature for all we know, right? And, uh, and so it's, especially when it comes to looking at Organism, of course, you ha don't have to make stupid mistakes, but essentially because you're on a scale on the verge where this law can be applied, right? It's sort of like a statistical uh, average, and we don't quite understand why and how it works. You know, but there, are, there are quite a few mathematical conjectures there, which if you prove them, it may clarify it, and maybe not. It may be wrong, but it may be wrong anyway. Why second law? What it has. And, and here, it's his history, of course, it depends. Everything in life is historical. And history, by the way, is another connective which is released there. So we are connected by common ancestors. And because we have sexual reproduction, we are connected by our future progeny, because we have common gene pool and some may come, right? So sex is another connective, time connective between individuals. And there are other connectors, connectors such as horizontal gene, gene, uh, gene transfer. Some gene may go via virus, especially between different organisms. Of course, it's not very common for, for higher organisms, but still, it's not impossible. So, so there are many, this is another, you know, the, the graph of life has kind of several edges, one directed time-wise and some horizontal 
which corresponding to respond to the symptoms. And of course, we are connected by sim sig signals, but it's a different kind of connect connections. Anyway, this is about information. And then, clustering, yeah. So all, uh, now we, as I said, organism exists and everything in life, many things are being repeated. And there's another characteristic feature of life that seemingly random thing may be repeated many times. And uh, in a somewhat different way, though it's not always easy to say in what sense it's different, say, for example, from like snowflakes. But snowflakes also look very similar, there are very many of them. However, in detail they differ significantly, and the pool from which they are taken is much smaller than the one for, for say, for genomes, right? But you have to look at the bacteria, you, you have a group of a colony of bacteria which goes in quadrillions, and they all their sequences of genome, about a million letters, and they may be even identical, right? Not just similar, identical. And we have million or, or trillion random string of letters, and they are identical, well, it must be life, period. Nothing else in physics can explain it, right? But all I understand, if it's possible to have in physics, you have the same molecule all over the world, all random, and all the same. And so this kind of distribution of randomness. So randomness will look like random string, but actually in a, in a pool of, of, of organism, we have sorry, tremendous repetition. They're not all the same, but there's tremendous repetition. And uh, exactly saying logically what kind of structure, characteristic of life, uh, of course, by observing what is happening, right? And then you kind of try to make abstract of that is a, is a non-trivial issue. And, and then there is a next level. <laughs> now, now look at the organism, and they, of course, they, they exist, as we know, in species, and there are groups of very much similar organism. And, uh, there was some kind of story how the species were defined in dif different stages, and it's, also, from outside it's funny how much kind of people try to fake it, make a definition of, of, of species. There are certain properties, there are little clusters, and then whatever they are, right? And this, but some would in, in, insist on giving the definitions and making the kind of names and inventing this or that definition, saying more or less what is there, just em emphasizing that. And, and then, but what's remarkable, there is a higher level of clusterization, this hierarchical uh, classification, and it's kind of meaningful, right? Say, say all insects, for example, they're quite different, but they have much in common, amazingly many in, in, in different things in common, and this, which is a reflection of how evolution was functioning, and specifically how, by how, how many parameters are there and which parameters bring some group together and there are this terminology in, in, in biology yeah, which of course sometimes hard to remember who is who right and this is a kind of some words which you probably know most of them you know, don't know or most of them but this is just to sh show how it, thing become complicated already on the level of words yeah there are so many things. And actually, even in, in there, if you look at the, this group which I just mentioned, I, th I think this, most of them have no, 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 accept, no, no, see, there are 36 that I feel in, 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 in there. So there's 36 different kind of animals, but only kind of 10 of them, you know, the name are common. For the rest of it, you don't know yeah, what they are. I never saw the name of other. 20, right? They are rare, relatively rare, but actually I, I, I will be not surprised that among them we start start extremely interesting phenomena. That sometimes it's rare organism carry tremendously fantastically interesting information. And I guess, unfortunately, life is too short to learn more of that. And uh, at some moment, I think this, there will be some way to organize this knowledge in, on the computers so I can extract those of you in the way artificial intelligence may be useful. That you ask generic question and say, well, are there something interesting that are there? And it, it brings you up this information. Now on the net you can do something, what I will try someday to do, but, but then it's certainly not so easy. So, 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 so he is, is uh, seven here, yeah, and there are more than that. 
<laughs> and you're only talking about multicellular organisms there. Sorry? You're only talking about multicellular organisms there. Yes, of course, of course. It's also a whole... Yes, I, this, I, no, I know it is, but I don't know even the words. <laughs> <laughs> it's already become tremendous mess, but it's fun to learn it, yeah. Of course, you cannot learn it instantaneously. Once you're a little bit, you can go to the next level. And then there is, of course, um, uh, ecological networks, and, and uh, the most kind of relevant for our life are the ones which were plants involved, because our food and our life depends on plants. And the two kind of uh, most important interaction between insects and plants, because plants being pollinated by insects on one hand, on the other hand, it's plants and fungi, because fungi uh, help to, to plants deliver, deliver the food from the soil, and they receive, in turn, uh, being fed by plants. So, and that is the specific word for these plants, which uh, sits in the roots, but I don't know how you pronounce this word. Many of these words work in English, and they find a verse, how, how do you, you call it, yeah? Myco mycorrhizal fungi, I don't know how to, how to say this verse. I never, I read them and never try to pronounce them, yeah? But there are this remarkable thing that roots, plop, the area of the absorption of roots goes by a factor of 10 due to this fungi. And one of the problems with the modern agriculture that when you use lots of artificial fertilizers, that plants don't need this fungi anymore. So it is stop feeding them. And so the fungi, the cause of fungi goes down. And when it goes down, the soil become, loses eventually organic material. And don't lose organic material, it becomes just a dust. And so much it goes with the wind, and there is no soil, and there is no plants, and there is no food. Right? And this process goes on now for about 100 years. Right, was artificial fertilizer and artificial nitrogen was introduced, and of course phosphorus, two major fertilizers. This is a harbor Bosch process, very kind of energetic, costly, and very environmentally costly. And it's a big part of the big problem to do without it. Yeah, and before that, of course, of course, I mean, just this is. If you know that, it was done by, by bacteria, which are able to bind, bind uh, nitrogen from the air and make organic uh, compounds of that, which is highly chemically difficult, because two atoms of nitrogen have very strong mutual connection, about 1,000 joules per, 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 per mole, so it's kind of one of the strongest connections in, in chemistry. And uh, nobody fully understands how it works. What it, there is a chemical process. There are some proteins which do that. But it's a very tricky process, of course, involving m m metals involved in that. I think, I think molybdenum or something. And some there are different metals for different type of that. And it's one big problem in science to make it artificially. Right? How to make this chemical process, which you do it without this high energy, pressure, temperature, etc., using in intelligent, intelligent catalyzer. This is one of the big kind of problem in, in, in science. And then there are the That's what's happening here. Yeah, and then another aspect of, of biology, it is uh, very mathematical. It is <laughs> so, so there is ecology and there is mathematical ecology and lots of relation between different organisms which can be described formally. And well, there is a mathematical in there, just I don't want to say about that because I want to, to show more pictures. And then there is discussion about evolution and that is a major branch of Biology and mathematics is crucial. And so Darwin, uh, Wallace, were not mathematicians, but what they would do, they actually looked, and this is an instance very inspiring, they looked at, uh, at life in mathematical terms. And so mathematically, the major thing in life, there is multiplic 
reproduction and multiple enlarging of number of individuals. But it's not happening. In reality, you've been cut off because there is space as linear. So rate of growth of population linear rather than exponential, as it would be if there were no constraints. And this is was written already in Fibonacci, you know, almost 900 years ago. And then it was realized, aha, this tree doesn't, uh, cutting this tree determines what happens in life. And then and, and Darwin kind of conjectured that this cutting off wrong branches de determined the way evolution goes, in particular species being created. It was a conjecture, and it is, in, but the way it was formulated was wrong, but direction of thinking was right. And, and so, so there is this terminology of Darwinian evolution, and, uh, and then it is, as we sh will try to explain later, maybe on the, I don't know when, because I'm certainly behind my schedule, it very much depends how you, what is your unit of evolution, or which evolution, you, whether you consider it Darwinian or non-Darwinian. It's, it's a very much ideological issue, I would say. Yeah. In, 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 in biologists are very touchy about that. But anyway, this is a, so something I written there, I don't want to repeat. Yeah. So what we want to do that, and then if, a few words about what done by other people, by, by, by thesis, coming, coming from Schrodinger, who was describing life as a thermodynamical system, thinking in, in these terms, emphasizing reproduction, metabolism, and then just it's repeated in, in, in a variety of ways, that life is a physical, a physical process with certain properties, but again, as I, it's, 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 in, in my view, the only honest way to say what is life by physics is something which looks physical, but we, I don't know what it is. And any other verse is just cheating. I mean, there is no way in physics to say what life is. You would take, take every, any simple system, like they take this, you know, car no machine, any implementation of car no machine, give a thesis, say, oh yeah, I know how it works. But where it came from, right? It was done by something, and there might be life which created it. Because otherwise, any such system would decay, would not exist, and cannot exist thermodynamically. Yeah. Carton, like a white machine, thermodynamically can exist for more than, you know, a few thousand years, so well, decay. So, you need something like life to create it. So, this is a criticism of physics. Chemists go closer, but also, yeah, but the, another point, yes, is especially funny, it's about astrophysicists, yeah. And this is a literature called the most mature definition of life. So, it's, it's some, so, self-sustained chemical system capable of undergoing Darwinian revolution, evolution. Yeah, it's, from, from, it's a funny definition because so you go to a new planet, you see something, and then you check what Darwinian, non-Darwinian revolution. So what you do, you go to a time machine and go billion years ago, you see what Darwinian, non-Darwinian, who cares? It's, it's, right, it's very, but this is how you recognize life, yeah? It's not how you do it. It's, Actually, if you look at the discussion people do there, you feel very good because it's as if intelligent people discuss and you see they're as stupid as you are, understand nothing about that. Very different, of course, from real biology. It's just, just words. And then there are chemi chemists certainly closer to life and, and, and they em em emphasize emphasized a mixture of metabolism and reproduction. And their point, of course, is autocatalysis. Indeed, autocatalysis is kind of, on the surface of this, it's a chemical phenomenon. When you have a bunch of chemicals, and the, there is one of them, kind of, most important one, which make, which is a catalyzed reaction. And as a product, you have, again, two copies of the same molecule of this catalyzer. So, <coughs> if you talk about autocatalysis, uh, <coughs> there, there should be something that drives it. Of course, there is energy input, yeah. There is a, of course, there might be input of energy, sure. It is not, it's not kind of, you know, no, it's not a, 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 an invertible reaction, yeah. It certainly goes in one direction, yeah. In the, in the flow, yeah, it happens. But, of course, it, my first, it's, 
the fact this may happen for larger molecules, again, mathematically implausible. If you look at probability of such things, so they may, very, they may build specially for that. So it's very, and it happens for small molecules, but my understanding is to look at rather exceptional cases. So, and, uh, and they all concern small molecules and rather simple processes. So it is, it, da, it is happening. In certain language you can say is out of catalysis, but I don't think it tells you anything yet. Too much. And besides that, besides that, there are other aspects of life, like say protein folding, or even in such as if chemical thing and synthesis of micro macromolecules, like uh, they, besides this chemical stuff, each step kind of chemical, but then there's mechanical, and then there's iteration, right? When you synthesize. Uh, even RNA from DNA, the simplest kind of all this process, it's still, it is not pure chem you know, chemistry, doesn't ad adequately describe it, yeah, because there is me mechanics of these things, and there is repetition of something, and there is number of step, and this is number of step is big, and this is uh, not common chemistry. And it is, uh, um, again, something characteristic of life. That there are the same thing done many times in a, in a sequence, and it happens in a random environment, but it is also highly non-random. And this is event, well, one of the, and there are some beautiful mathematical models of that. Uh, I, 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 I already has mentioned them, and then we say a couple of words of them at another occasion. And so I have to stop somewhere. But now, yes, exactly what I added is just trees, because this, because trees are a common pattern in life. And in life, in, 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 they ap appear explicitly and implicitly. That's geometrically, also logically. And I just want to present these pictures. And this is how many lives are around. And the structures, the self-repetition of them, which creates, which creates uh, what is called this pa uh, fractal patterns. Right, so. By the way, I don't think I added lungs. Our lungs are also like that. So this evolution trees, and all kind of trees, and there are much more of them in everywhere in classification and in, in, in evolution. Yeah, so just pictures of trees are everywhere much more. That I indicate only some of them. Yeah, and um, this is the one of. Yeah, this is, by the way, a very interesting thing because it's not non-biological. Trees, and they look very like, like usual trees, or some of them. And uh, exactly how they fit into biological structure, that's very similar how they appear in, in, in languages or how they appear in biology. And uh, there may or may not be a kind of general mechanism behind it. Right. Some of them are very simple, say the trees, well, not simple, I mean just, I, I'm joking, not very simple, I'm sorry, yeah. Re reasonably simple, this so-called lin Meyer system is kind of particular mathematical scheme which creates indeed much of the structure of the trees up to a point, of course, yeah. And, and, but some, ah, here is lungs, yeah, also kind of a tree. So this tree-like structure appears naturally in, 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 in biology in, 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 on many occasions. But again, I don't think there is a system, there are some kind of attempts systematically described, but it's not only in, in biology, but also in, in our mentality and, in, and particularly in languages, when tree appears in two different ways, at least in two different ways. So the structure which nature involves out of repetition, if, you, if there is a recursion, and, and in biology on all levels, it's, we see result of recursive processes, they're simple, but they repeated many times, and then some amazing, amazing things appear. Even if you trade three or four or five times, you can multiply effects, and certainly numbers become very big, in effect, uh, unpredictable. So, and trees are instances of that. Okay, so I stop in that. I say, say a little, a few words about that in my second, last lecture, but then I want to go to something more specific and to, to specifically to biotechnology and one hand and to kind of and global ecology 
to just to, to tell you the known numbers about distribution of energy and matter in this world dominated by ourselves biologically, right? So what is place? We uh, our place in ecology of the earth, and there are many interesting numbers which were well were well known here. Yeah. Of course, it's a number, the table, but have give you idea how much place we take and how much place remains, and so we have to do about if you have to be worried about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is for today. So I'll, I'll finish yeah, for that. And uh, and then maybe maybe I add something about other kind of mathematical patterns which appear. Which there are many kind of very interesting mathematical, kind of highly non-trivial mathematical phenomena hidden in, in, in biology. And uh, but they but, but the, there are these of two types. One a very generic, which I was he discussing today, it's like what is information or what is probability as far as it's applicable to biology. And it's and it maybe interesting to have mathematics adapted to that. Or others are rather technical, but for example, what brings definite shape, say, of 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 chromosome and bacteria, and they're shaped in a certain way, they are formed, and one of the factors is of, is uh, twisting of this, uh, it's supercoiling of, 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 of things, the kind of interesting mathematics, and mechanics involved into that, which is certainly non complete, but this is a kind of real body of mathematics, which is related and tells you something about biology. But the most interesting, in my view, is mathematical design of experiments. If you absorb enough information from biology, you may mathematically suggest how to design experiments. And the e easiest kind of instance of that, if you have some poison and you, and you have some kind of, uh, 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 some number of materials, some may be poison and some not, and you have so many animals and you want to kind of decide what is what, how you mix this and how you do that. And this combinatorial problem, and b mathematician worked on that and found kind of, kind of whole, there are several kind of theorems here, results, and they found optimal way to solve it, which never used bi biologists who don't trust mathematicians. And that's an interesting kind of point. But still, this is a kind of things, this is a simple mathematically and well-defined question. Yeah, you have so many substances, how you mix them in different way, you give it to different animals, there are probabilities they act, how many animals, how many time, how long experiments you have to make, optimize your experiment. And this, by the way, I think very, very interesting way you can use mathematical biology. Very practical and simultaneously interesting involving, being involved in this work. But for that, just to, to find such a way, I have to learn much more than I do. And, uh, but I give some examples of well, the new technologies which appear in where maybe, I don't know how, but it would be very nice to get involved mathematically. Okay, but this will be for the last two lectures. Uh, be, uh, I divide them into parts, yeah. But for today, it's okay, I finished. And, uh, and then I hope that um, after the last lecture, I will prepare at least something to put on the, on, on the net. This already, here it's some, some already in a reasonable shape, I can put it, yeah. But when you just, it's most pleasant but disappointing when I look at this, I, I have reference to everything at the little point, and there are now articles very clearly written, I, I try to find them, but a huge amount of, it branches tremendously, so, yeah, I have two hours of lectures, but if you follow references where more or less explain what I said, it, it takes each kind of reference is another four lectures, yeah, so it should be made, so. But that's, will be not come, if I learn it, maybe I'll do that another time. <laughs>